there's the speed bump. I'm on the smart mode. Ah, oh, look at that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Wow, so this I wouldn't really have been able to find out had I not test drive the cars back to back. Welcome to Cars in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis, Hyundai, and Kia cars. And the car I am driving today is 2025 Hyundai Tucson facelift hybrid. And as you saw from today's thumbnail, I am on my way to make a comparison video test driving Gia Sportage Hybrid. A disclaimer here is that it's not a fair game to make a video and make the comparison at the moment because we know that Tucson just got this brand new facelift and it's almost like an all new change when it comes to the interior. Tucson gets the brand new CCNC dual 12.3 inch monitors right and left. Everything has been integrated into much bigger interior space, especially this center column, thanks to the column type shifter right here. The list just goes on and on. Meanwhile, if you are curious about the Tucson facelift itself, I actually have a lot of videos and reviews on the car with the ICE model. So please feel free to refer to my previous video. Again, going back to the Kia Sportage Hybrid, that car has already been out for years literally it's really overdue for a facelift and it is just around the corner however I am test driving Tucson facelift hybrid right now so it will be a very good comparison video to deliver you what the differences are where the differences lie it could be between the brands of Hyundai and Kia it could be the differences between a facelift and pre-facelift and of course Tucson and Sportage. All right, well, that's a long intro as always. Let me tell you a little bit about the Tucson Hybrid facelift so that I can actually go sit inside the Kia Sportage Hybrid and see if that Sportage has the feature or not. Because I know there are a lot of exclusive Tucson facelift hybrid exclusive features that are mostly only visible and felt as you test drive the vehicle for quite some time. Things that you just wouldn't find, you wouldn't be able to find by test driving the car for a few minutes, if you will. We all know that's the design right there. That is the Kia Sportage that we currently get. The hybrid model would essentially look very similar to that car we see right there. The design-wise, exterior-wise, it's not going to look all that different. There's a tiny bit of a exterior differences when it comes to the ICE versus hybrid. Well, for the record, if you're curious about how this facelift Tucson looks different compared to that of the Kia Sportage, I also have a side-by-side -side comparison video on my channel in the card above and pinned comment below, so feel free to check it out. So let's jump right into the point that I was making the reference to. The exclusive Tucson facelift hybrid exclusive button features is this driver only button that you can only get it on a hybrid model. And yes, that's not just this Tucson facelift, but also all, if not most of the hybrid models from HMG, Hyundai Motor Group cars. But I bet you didn't know this. You can actually choose baby mode. And it does not pop up by toggling through the different drive modes using the button here. So you don't see that. It's all good eco, sport, and my drive. But when you put the car into my drive, go into the settings, and there is actually baby mode. When I first spotted that feature, I was like, what? is this <laughs> self-explanatory what the feature is supposed to be like and i already have a good sense of how it's going to feel like but i was a bit skeptical about it because as we know the car does not come with ecs electronically controlled suspension therefore managing the movement of a vehicle especially the drive the ride itself it could get quite tricky when you don't have control over your suspensions right however the reason why it is hybrid specific is that the Hyundai Motor Group's hybrid systems, the latest ones, a bit of early ones too, comes with what's called E-Motion. It utilizes the motor to control the pitching movement and let alone the pitching control the drive itself. It helps with the understeers and oversteers, the corners. The car utilizes the motor to control the movement. Simply put, it's made possible because of the motor. Therefore, that's the reason why it's hybrid specific. And I actually have been driving using the baby mode and my wife Tuma she actually suffers quite a lot of motion sickness that being said she could actually feel the difference immediately the baby mode versus a regular 
mode, if you will. If you are watching this video after getting your hybrid, I strongly recommend you give the baby mode a test. You will love it. Next feature updated on this facelift Tucson hybrid, you can now have wireless Android Auto as well as Apple CarPlay. And with the Android Auto, it associates with the car's HUD, so you can actually grab the information from Android Auto and shoot it on the HUD. Unfortunately, it does not work with Apple CarPlay just yet. The facelift Tucson also gets acoustic double laminated glasses on the first row seats, adding on to better NVH, which stands for noise, vibration, and harshness. The list just goes on and on. There's an extra sound absorbers underneath the bonnet, inside the car, underneath the fender liners, wheelhouses. Before this turns into the exhaustive Tucson hybrid facelift review, those are the features exclusive to Tucson facelift. Lift. However, speaking of the acoustic glasses, it's a bit of a shame that Tucson only got it on the first row windows, whereas Sportage actually got it on the both front and second row seats. I'll definitely pay closer attention to the MVH, the noise coming into the cabin, the drive itself. I really have a good idea of what the Tucson Hybrid facelift feels like, sounds like, because I've been driving the car for the past week. Over 320 kilometers I have clocked. I just remembered that it's actually Gia Sportage Hybrid that the E-Motion was first implemented. It was my first car to feel and test out that emotion. Kia went really big, all big on the hybrid, and then they stressed a lot about the differences of the pitching movement of a vehicle when you go over a speed bump. And with the Sportage hybrid, I could actually feel the difference immediately. So there's another speed bump. I'm actually waiting. Look at that. I will include that footage right now. You can see my reaction and my expression, facial expression. And that's how blown away I was. So right now, I think a good bit of a power would be nice. So on a freeway, as you can see, plenty of torque and power because the motor will send the car out immediately. And also look at it, so tight corners making extreme lane change. I was already pushing the car outwards, but I was able to push the car even further thanks to the EDTVC. It's all about the emotion and the drive and the motor that I told you about. So it is the hybrid specific, so I can actually dig into extreme corners corners like this it's it's fun to drive wow <laughs> and pick up the speed this six-speed automatic just works beautifully with the 1.6 turbo engine that Hyundai Motor Group is really known for the beauty of the hybrid comes in by just changing your drive modes put it back on the eco mode you are now driving it the most fuel efficient fuel friendly way possible and just check out the drive the ride i'm pretty sure you can see it from the video too it's really cozy comfy driving it around freeway hda2 that's associated with this car the list just goes on and on the one thing that i might have really wished for is the hod hands-on detection that actually allows you to just keep your hand on the steering wheel wheel and then the car will never ask you to get your hands on the steering wheel however this is still torque feedback basis meaning that you have to shake the steering wheel every now and then with HOD all you have to do is this keep two or more fingers on the steering wheel the alarm coming up so you actually have to shake not as hard as it used to you actually do need some input from the steering wheel just like so sound absorptions and noise cancellation i think it's really really beautiful compared to the preface lift model however i'm not saying that it is on par with to that of the bigger brother santa fe no I can't really find a better word to describe it, but it was just ridiculously quiet and cozy. However, this Tucson facelift hybrid 
certainly much more quieter and pleasant compared to that of the Kona or Kona HEV for that matter as well. All right, now I am inside Sportage, as you can see, and I guess I'll take my word back a little on the part that the video not being a fair game. Well, because I'm actually inside the 30th anniversary Gia Sportage, one of those limited versions, if you will. So it's got the fancy interior, beautiful green interior. The headrest also has this engraved, look at that. So it's got the 30 with the Sportage written on it and beautiful suede, the texture, the color. Of course, the interior is one of the biggest differences that I can spot the line of sight I don't really feel much of a difference to be honest but I do feel that the Sportage actually has a bit more slanted more steeper front windshield if you will Wow this I actually had a subscriber mentioning about this that is the flag type glass that the Sportage gets because the side mirrors are attached on the door panels I actually have less blind spot compared to that of a Tucson for the obvious reason Tucson has the side mirrors right here right so I have that much of a blind spot, whereas Sportage doesn't have any of that whatsoever. Do you feel the difference on the video too? Well, let me know in the comment below, but hopping in two different cars back to back, I can actually feel the difference immediately. And speaking of which, all these buttons and the interior and also this display, gotta say that it does feel a bit outdated too. So I did actually look up my previous Sportage video that I did the review and it was already over two years. And that's when Kia EV6 just rolled out. So that's why Sportage actually got all the benefit in the world. It was actually Sportage that got the 12.3 inch monitors first over its bigger brother Sorento. Only with the recent facelift, Sorento also got the 12.3 inch monitor. Kia Sportage got it long before the bigger brother Sorento did. Despite that two year differences between this and the facelift Tucson, Sportage certainly still puts up a great fight. The displays and graphics here, it does feel a bit outdated. Or it could be a Gia slash Honda difference. I'll take my war back. It just feels like Gia Sportage or Gia most likely. Especially you see this infotainment press this around to change into the AC. It also has the driver only because what? I told you it's hybrid, right? The interior, the design language, opposites united. You can clearly find all of that in these two cars back to back. Gigantic panoramic sunroof, great amount of sunlight coming into the cabin. Same thing, um, HEVs, my personal favorite type of a vehicle, hands down. I think it has the best of both worlds in terms of ICE and EV. You don't have to charge your HEV, but you still do get to enjoy all the beauty, the essence of a car being an EV. Driving around in city roads, it's super quiet and cozy like it is right now. You see, essentially the car right now is an EV. It's just running on the motors only. Thanks to the motor, the instant torque and the feedback and the response. It's the rotary type interior everywhere inside. Same for the gear selection even. So push down for the parking and twist it around to go into the drive, neutral and push it one more for the reverse. All self-explanatory, we've seen this before. But most likely on a facelift model with the Sportage 2, I think it will be a column type just like it was on a Hyundai Tucson facelift because there just is so much more benefit to having the column shifter type attached right here. That way we get much more space right here. And also designers can get really creative with what they can do in terms of the center console right here. This is my favorite. It's really clever thing that they did. So do take a look at a closer look of the interior. So these are the points and things that I actually have mentioned that makes it feel like it's a bit outdated. Maybe it could be the layout. It could actually be the sensation of touching and operating the buttons perhaps. For the wireless charging system, they could not actually make the enough of a space beforehand charging your phone sideways just like that. It barely fits my iPhone 14 Pro Max with the covers around it as you can see. Tucson, you had the phone right here and you can reach the phone immediately. It also had the charging status graphics which was very direct and intuitive whereas it is just that little lighting right there for sportage however 
I like that. It's super clean and neat, sleek like that. But I think Sportage is putting up a great fight being the car being more than two years old. That's how great Sportage HEV is. And I still do remember that sensation, the first test drive going over the speed bump. That was quite an amazing experience hands down. The Sportage Hybrid also has BVM, blind spot view monitor. It's really hard for me to pinpoint and find out what the differences are, which is superior over the other. There is no HUD on a Sportage Hybrid like that because it was actually Tucson facelift hybrid, which was the first car to get the HUD on its segment. And I actually have to put the car in smart mode in order to enjoy that e-motion and e-ride. So let's test out all about that. Even without the motor aiding me with the vertical movement that is the pitching of a vehicle, the car itself is just super really cozy. And I will also get to drive this car on a bit fast freeway as well. So I'll check that out momentarily. Nothing, nothing to complain about when it comes to a city drive with Sportage Hybrid. The way the car behaves is 95% same. I think I almost want to say that it is identical. As you just saw, I am literally driving this these two cars back to back. And you know, I've been driving the Tucson facelift hybrid for the past week over 300 kilometers. So I know precisely how that car feels like. Hopping into Sportage hybrid, that flag type glass, the less blind spot that I told you about, except for that, I honestly do not feel much of a difference, except for that sensation I get inside the cabin because of the car being different with the design, the layout. I'm not really going to talk about the different interiors because it's just a different interior language. All right, well, let's put into the sport mode, see if we can pick up some power. Wow, the transmission engagement is really smooth. So on a sport mode, the paddle shifters work as the good old traditional paddle shifters, you know, shifting down and up and so forth. In the smart and eco mode, the paddle shifters now will work. Okay, I guess that is the difference. It's all like the paddle shifters on Sportage. So it all works as a paddle shifter. You can only sound shift a gear on a sport mode. Well, let's hit the car just a little bit here. It's all adequate, adequate amount of power, accelerator, as well as the brake, great city car, commuter car, family car, you name it. No wonder why both Sportage and Tucson are the best selling cars from each brand. One fun factor here is that Sportage sells more here in Korea over Tucson, but it's the exact opposite in North American market. So it might be the original taste, personal taste differences. It could be environmental factor. I don't know, maybe it could be the dealership. If you are driving Tucson or Sportage, let me know in the comment below, what was your reason behind choosing the vehicles? All right, so let's talk about the paddle shifter I told you about. It's actually Tucson facelift that got the choices of setting and personalizing your region brakes on eco and smart mode. Whereas you can still use the pedal shifter as to shift down the gears on sport mode. So you can do that on a Tucson facelift, but not on a hybrid Sportage. Wow, so this I wouldn't really have been able to find out had I not test drive the cars back to back. Oh wow, <laughs> fun factor. That clearly is the advantage that the Tucson facelift has over sport facelift and I got nothing to complain about when it comes to the HDA working beautifully so you see when I need to get my smartphone I would actually have to almost lean forward to get the phone out Oh, and the glove box, I can see that Sportage actually has smaller glove box compared to the Tucson. I keep on saying it, but there are two years of differences in between these two cars. So Tucson better be an upgrade compared to Sportage, but Sportage is still a amazing great car and i can see that it's got the krell premium sound system right there and let me quickly just show you the interior 
like that. So that is the gigantic panoramic sunroof I told you about. Beautiful seat, the color, just look at the quiltings. It really feels luxurious. It's not Alcantara, it's suede. It almost gives me the same vibe. Love that. Don't you love the color too? There's the speed bump, I'm on the smart mode. Ah, look at that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. There's the speed bump, I'm on the smart mode. Ah, look at that. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Crazy control over the pitching. Automotive YouTubers say it's land of speed bumps here in Korea. You do reach over to your smartphone every now and then, right? When you are at a red light and so forth. So, this is one of the largest complaints I actually have with the Sportage. It's really tricky, hard to get and reach over to your smartphone, put it on the right place to get that wireless charging going. But other than that, I just have no complaint, no issue. I will talk more about this when I get back to Tucson, but I think it will really boil down to your personal preference when it comes to choosing Tucson facelift hybrid or Sportage hybrid. It could be your brand preference, Hyundai over Kia or Kia over Hyundai. So there's another speed bump. I'm actually waiting. <laughs> Look at that. It really feels like I am going over the speed bump with the very long wheelbase full-size saloon. I am not slowing down at all on the speed bump. I am just going over it at what? 40 kilometers per hour. No issue. And this one's tall one. Oh wow. Very pleasant. And let's check out the NVH noise, vibration, and harshness. Right, right. The acoustic glasses on the second row seats. You see, Sportage gets it, while Tucson facelift did not get it, right? I mean, it's not a precisely the same road and condition, so I am not really able to pinpoint the differences right now, but, but I'm not so sure if Tucson facelift necessarily is poor compared to this um, Sportage hybrid. Even on an uphill where you need the power, the motor engages beautifully, flawless. I am actually lowering the second row window down. And yep, I've seen it with my eyes. It is acoustic glasses, double laminated glasses on the second row seats. Of course, there's got to be a difference, but again, honestly speaking, I don't really feel that much of a difference. Well, speaking about the difference here is that Tucson facelift still did not get any of the LED rear turn signals. It is just still a good old turn signal, the bulb type, if you will. Whereas Sportage got the LED lights from the get-go. LED turn signal versus not, is that a deal breaker for you? I don't know, not, not so much for me. But you see, I know everybody has different personal preferences and tastes, so that could be the reason why. There's a lot of speed bumps on this driving course. And you can probably see from the video, right? How bumpy it is with the speed bumps and also this uh, a little bit windy and curvy roads. I'm not slowing down at all. Let's hit that. All right, that was a bit harsh one, but well, let's hit that. All right, that was a bit harsh one, but well, another one here. And another one. <laughs> it's a beautiful ride, beautiful ride. I would certainly have enjoyed stronger regen brakes on a downhill like this. I would actually hit on the pedal shifter if it was Tucson and milk that best recharging status out of the motor on a downhill. Well, the car, the Sportage also is doing it all automatically, but I know the car could actually give me much stronger region brake on a downhill like that. I mean, I, I do really like the design of this Sportage. So if it was both the preface lift, I would have gone with Kia Sportage, but come facelift Tucson. One of the biggest advantage that Tucson Facelift has over Sportage is the IFS, Intelligent Front Light System. It, it literally makes a day and night difference during your night drive and night time. Including the B-roll right now, the video speaks out much louder than me talking all about it. And if you ask me, does it make a difference? Yes, huge difference. It really makes your night drive experience completely different. I can tell you that for Sure. So I think that beautifully just wraps up my experience with the Sportage Hybrid here. Let me get back to Tucson and I'll tell you about the rest.
maybe a bit more engine roar that I hear coming into the cabin. But again, this could be the difference between a car to another. So I'm not really going to pinpoint on that. All right, I'll meet you back in Tucson. Let's go. Jumping back and forth, the two cars. I do feel the differences, of course. Um, I must admit that the Tucson facelift interior feels a bit more spacious. There's much more room throughout the center console, well, let alone this gigantic space that you can store your purse, water bottle, you name it. It was just the cup holders and a tiny armrest that you had with the Sportage. However, it's the double the size of the armrest here and also the storage that the Sportage didn't have whatsoever. You can actually fit your purse, no problem. Laptop, purse, you name it, water bottles, everything can go in there, no problem. And that is the wireless charging pad that I told you about, vertical. It's really accessible, you can reach over here. We can clearly see who the winner is when it comes to this portion here. I keep on saying, it there are two years of difference the gap between these two cars so if you own and operate sportage hybrid i think you are the winner here if you have further more questions between these two cars drop in the comment below i will try to get back to you and give you the answers to best of my ability as i always do all right going over today's video which one would you go with if you could choose between the two sportage hybrid there is of course the discount because the car has already been out there for two years. Tucson facelift hybrid, you probably need to wait minimum of six months to get the car where you are overseas market. Even here in Korea, the wait isn't that crazy. It's about one to three months in between. That is the question here. Would you wait to get this Tucson facelift hybrid? or go with a Sportage Hybrid with a bit of a discount. I'm pretty sure there is a discount, right? Drop in the comment below, let me know your thoughts, and I'll see you in the next video. It was a very tough call driving the car back to back. I honest, I genuinely was surprised by how great Sportage Hybrid was. I mean, Tucson is a winner overall, but once again, this is a brand new car, and I am comparing it to a brand new car to that of a car that was that's more than two years old. Don't forget to like and subscribe Cars in Korea if you did, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.